Hello dear students, welcome to our virtual chemistry class. This is Muhammad Asif Iqbal, senior teacher, Department of Chemistry, Milestone College. In this class, I am going to discuss with you chapter 5, Chemical Bond. Chemical Bond is one of the most important topics in chemistry. After completing this chapter, you will be able to understand how elements interact with each other, how compound interact with each other and how different types of chemical compound is formed. Dear students, last one and a half year we are going through pandemic and it is an ongoing effort to continue your study. So you must watch this class from beginning to end. The outcome of this lecture, valence electrons and valency, that means you will be able to define what is valence electron and valency, radicals and their valencies and chemical formula and rules of writing different types of chemical formula. So students, without any further ado, let's start. Now students, what is actually chemical bond? Now you can see the board, the force of attraction that binds two atoms in a molecule is called chemical bond. I repeat one second, the force of attraction that binds two atoms in a molecule is called chemical bond. There are different types of chemical bond are available. For example, ionic bond, covalent bond and metallic bond and the process of forming different kinds of bond is different. Understanding chemical bond, we need to understand some of the topics. Among them, valency electron, valence electrons is one of the most important one. So what is actually valence electron? The number of total electrons in the outermost principal energy level of an element is called the valence electron of that element. I am going to give you an example of valence electron. You can see the board. You can see this is sodium. The total number of electron present in sodium is 11 and the electronic configuration of sodium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 and 3s1. Here you can see the last outermost principal energy level of sodium is 3 and there are one electron in this place so the valence electron of sodium is one similar way i'm going to write down another example of valence electron you can see this is chlorine chlorine contains 17 electron in its shell and the configuration of chlorine 1s2 electronic configuration of chlorine is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 and 3p5 now it's when you can see the outermost principle energy level of chlorine is 3 and the total number of electron present is last or outermost principal energy level of chlorine is 2 plus 5 that means 7. So here we can see the valence electron of chlorine is 7. While forming chemical bond atom usually donate share or receive electron. And this donation, sharing and receiving electron depend on the number of electron present it is outermost principal energy shell. So this is the capacity of an atom to form bond with another atom and this capacity is known as valency. Now in precise what is valency? The capacity of bonding of an atom or radical with another atom or radical while forming a molecule is called valency. I repeat once again, the capacity of bonding an atom or radical with another atom or radical while forming a molecule is called valency. So valency is the capacity or ability of an atom or radical. We consider the valency of hydrogen is 1. You know, the valency of hydrogen is 1. Now, from here, we can find out the valency of other elements and you can find out the valence of other element by observing the molecule where hydrogen is present. The number of hydrogen is present while forming a compound with other atom, other atom is the valency of that particular atom. For example, if we write down the hydrogen chloride, you can see there are only hydrogen Therefore, the valency of chlorine, the valency of chlorine will be 1. Similar way, water molecule H2O, here the valency of oxygen is 2. 
because there are two hydrogen are present in here so from here we also find out that the valency of oxygen is two and we also find out the valency of other elements while forming chemical bond with oxygen we must multiply the number of oxygen present of that compound with two to find out the other elements valency i'm going to show you an example calcium oxide here you can see the one oxygen is present therefore the valency of calcium will be 2 into 1 that means 2 similar way if you observe the valency of car uh, if you see the carbon dioxide here the valency of carbon will be 2 multiply 2 2 is the number of oxygen and 2 is the valency of oxygen therefore the valency of carbon is 4 so this is how we can find out the valency of other elements by using some some elements dear students while chemical forming chemical bond elements usually show different kinds of valency not all elements but some elements and that is known as variable valency so in precise the definition of variable valency is some elements show more than one valency while forming different kinds of compound this kinds of valency is called variable valency i repeat once again some elements show more than one valency while forming different kinds of compounds this kinds of valency is called variable valency for example iron iron show two valency two and three so iron actually show the variable valency i'm going to show you different kinds of compound here you can see this is ferrous chloride where iron show valency 2 and this is ferric chloride where iron show the valency 3 so iron actually show the variable valency while showing the variable valency sometimes elements does not show its full capacity to form the chemical bond so there are some capacity which remain hide and these kinds of thing is known as latent valency so what is the definition of latent valency the difference between the highest valency of an element and its active valency is called the latent valency of that element for that compound so what is actually active valency the active valency is the valency by which element is forming chemical bond here the active valency of iron is 2 here active valency of iron is 3 so the the latent valency vary from compound to compound depend on the element and their its capacity to use so i'm going to show you the latent valency of iron for example this is ferrous chloride where iron show the valency 2 or the active valency of iron is 2 but iron can show the valency 3 so the valency which is hide inside the ferric chloride is 3 minus 2 that means 1 so the latent valency here is 1 the latent valency in case of ferrous chloride the latent valency of iron is 1 similar way i'm going to write down another example this is sulfur dioxide we know that sulfur show three valencies 2 4 6 in this place sulfur actually show you can see 2 into 2 that means 4 the valency of oxygen is 2 and the total number of oxygen 2 therefore the valency of sulfur is 4 but here sulfur does not use its full capacity that means there are something remain hide inside this compound and that is the latent valency of sulfur the latent valency of sulfur in this place is 6 minus 6 minus 4 6 is the highest valency of sulfur and here you can see uh, the valency of sulfur dioxide sul sulfur in sulfur dioxide is 4 so the latent valency here is 2 so this is all about the variable valency and latent valency now students another new thing which is radical so what is actually radical a bundle of atoms from more than one elements combined together receive positive or negative charges and act as an ion of an element 
is called radical i repeat once again a bundle of atoms from more than one element compa combined together receive positive or negative charges and act as an ion of an element is called radical so radical is a bundle of atom and during the chemical reaction they remain intact and work like an ion of an element so i'm going to give you some of the example that will help you to understand more precisely you can see ammonium and h4 the charge number of ammonium is one one thing i did not mention it here every radical has charge that might be positive or negative but the valency is always positive num number so you can see the ammonium the ammonium is positive one the charge number of ammonium is one plus one and the valence of ammonium is one and then the compound of ammonium is ammonium chloride now come to the next one carbonate here you can see the formula of carbonate and the charge number of carbonate is minus two the valency of carbonate is two and compound here you can get an example calcium carbonate similar way hydrogen carbonate where the charge is minus one valence is one and this is the example of calcium car bicarbonate or uh, uh, sorry this is the example of hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate this is sodium bicarbonate then come to the sulfate here the valency of sulfate is 2 the charge number of sulfate is minus 2 and copper sulfate is an example of sulfate radical here uh, here it is an, uh, a compound and then hydrogen sulfate the formula of hydrogen sulfate is HSO4 and the charge of hydrogen sulfate is minus 1 the valency of hydrogen sulfate is one and the for of the and the ex, an example of hydrogen sulfate is sodium hydrogen sulfate so this is all about radicals now students come to the chemical formula what is chemical formula a chemical formula is a way of presenting information and chemical proportions of atoms that constitute a particular chemical compound or molecule using chemical element symbols and numbers i repeat once again a chemical formula is a way of representing information about the chemical proportion of atoms that constitute a particular chemical compound or molecule using chemical element symbols and numbers i'm going to give you an example of chemical formula you can see chlorine this is the formula of chlorine molecule here two chlorine atom are present so two is the number of chlorine atom similar way we can write down o2 this is the chemical formula of oxygen molecule here two oxygen atom are present similar way h2o this is the formula of water molecule here two hydrogen and one oxygen atom is present students i'm going to show you the system of writing chemical formula in case of the molecule of elements we must write down the number of atoms which present in the element at the subscript of its symbol i'm going to show you that we can see h2 here h is the symbol of hydrogen and this place where i write down the two is known as subscript we write down two in the subscript of that symbol and this indicate that two hydrogen atom is consist in hydrogen molecule or we can write down o2 here two oxygen atom is present in oxygen molecule similar way cl2 two chlorine atom is required to form a chlorine molecule there are some atoms are remaining where no molecule is formed for example metallic elements where no molecules is formed so in that place we only write down the symbol for example fe iron or sodium in that place no molecule is formed that's why we write down the symbol in that manner now students come to the rule number two when a compounds molecule is formed by two different elements molecule and 
their valency is not divisible at that place we must write down the symbol of that element followed by the valency of other elements i repeat one second when a molecule of a compound is formed by two different elements atom and their valency is not divided by a common number then we write down the formula in such a manner we must write down the symbol followed by the valency of other element i'm going to show you here you can see the formula of water h2o here the oxygen valency of oxygen is 2 which i write down in front of the hydrogen and the valency of hydrogen is is 1 that i actually need not mention in in front of the oxygen similar way we can write down aluminium oxide here you can see the valency of aluminium is 3 therefore we write down the valency in front of the oxygen and the valency of oxygen is 2 which we write down in front of the aluminium so this is the rules how we can write down the formula of a compound where the valency of two different atoms are not divisible by a common number but in case of radical what we will do we will do the same thing for example ammonium chloride here you can see the valency of chlorine is 1 which i write which is uh, in front of ammonium and the valency of ammonium is 1 which is in front of chloride but in case of something like the valency is not 1 more than 1 2 3 or 4 and that is not divisible by any common number then what will you do in that place i'm going to give an example magnesium phosphate in that place we will write the radical inside the first bracket and then write down the valency of first ele element in front in the subscript so this is the formula of magnesium phosphate this is the form formula of magnesium phosphate where we write down the valency of phosphate in front of magnesium and the valency of mag magnesium in front of phosphate and we must write down the radical inside the bracket similar way another example ammonium phosphate nh4 3 po4 here you can see that the valency of ammonium is one that's why you need not write down anything in front of the phosphate but the valency of phosphate is three therefore we take the ammonium radical inside the first bracket and write down the valency of phosphate in the subscript of that radical so this is how we can write down the formula now come to the third rule if it is happened then two atoms valency are divisible in that place we must divide them the, by the common number and we'll take the quotient for example i'm going to give you an example carbon dioxide molecule here we can see the valency of carbon is 4 and the valency of oxygen is 2 so we can divide it by this two number by two after dividing by two what we will found we will found two and we found one so we, we write nothing in front of carbon and two in front of oxygen similar way we can write down the formula of ferrous sulfate here the valency of iron is two the valency of iron is two and the valency of sulfate also two which we can divide by 2 and in both case we will find out the quotient 1 so we write down 1 we need not write down anything in front of iron or sulfate because 1 is not required to mention so this is all about writing different types of formula of different elements and compounds molecule dear students hope that you understood all the topics that discussed in this class if you have any question if you have any difficulty to difficulty to understand anything please discuss these topics with your respective subject teacher and thank you for being present from beginning to end